Yeah, let's talk cricket. West Indies Regional Four-Day Championship, a tournament that's going down to the wire to decide the champions of the 2024 season. And the final round started today with matches in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago and Antigua and Barbuda. Before we go specifically to the matches, though, let's have a look at the points table because just six points separate the top four entering the final round. The Windward Islands Volcanoes leading with 90 points. Barbados pride 87.6, Guyana Harpy Eagles 87.2, and the Leeward Islands Hurricanes 84.6. So really tight at the top. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in fifth on 72.8. The Jamaica Scorpion sixth, 57 points. West Indies Academy 54.2. And the combined campuses and colleges, 26.6 points. So that's the point standings entering today's start of the seventh and final round in the competition. All right, let's have a look at the first set of matches then. And where do we start? Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago, Leeward Islands Hurricanes versus the Windward Islands Volcanoes. And yeah, it essentially means that only one of these can win the title based on the standings. They can't both win based on what's happening the hurricanes 300 from 82.5 overs mikhail louis 100 that it's that's his third century of the regional four-day season to go with three half centuries joel andrew getting 68 as well ryan john three for six to seven for the hurricanes and the volcanoes in reply six for one at the close with jeremiah louis getting the lone wicket the volcanoes trail by 294 runs Staying in Trinidad and Tobago, now at the Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Ground, the combined campuses and the colleges taking on the guy in the Harpy Eagles. The CCC bowled out for 200. Demario Richard stopped scoring with 43. Niall Smith and Vera Samipomo taking three wickets each for the guy in the Harpy Eagles, who in reply got to 114 for one at the close. Raymond Perez unbeaten on 61 with Kevlin Anderson on 27. Amari Goodridge taking the lone wicket for the CCC one for 22 and the Harpy Eagles trail by 86 runs so they are giving themselves a real shot at winning this title as I'm sure they'll be pushing for an outright win. Not a good look for the Barbados Pride though who are also in contention for the crown. Bowled out for 153 on the opening day against the West Indies Academy. Jonathan Drake stopped scoring with 35. Johan Lane taking 3 for 23 and McKenney Clark 3 for 26. And the West Indies Academy in reply going pretty well. 111 for 4. Akeem Ogeest unbeaten on 67. Akeem Jordan 2 for 37. The pick of the Barbados Pride Bowlers so far. They'll be extremely disappointed with what they have delivered on the opening day as they chase the title. But still, there is time for the Barbados Pride to turn it around. There's still play going on at Sabina Park, by the way, featuring the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force and the Jamaica Scorpions. The latest score, 307 Four, seven. Seems as if Joshua De Silva, the West Indies wicketkeeper batsman, has gotten a century. I'm seeing here 104 not out. Um, so that match going pretty late here on the opening day. Lanson Mariah, what an ending. What an ending to the regional four-day season where you enter the final round with four of the eight teams having a shot at the title. I think that's beautiful and that, that is exactly the type of competition you want to see at this level, Ricardo. If we are to expect the West Indies cricket, the senior team, to be any good. So I think that's very, very inspiring. I feel motivated. And then the centuries that are coming out of it. You spoke about Mikhail Louis getting four centuries? Three. Three now. Three centuries and the half centuries as well, Three right? Three half centuries as well. Then we see Joshua De Silva in his role as captain for the TNT Red Force, of course, stepping up with the bat, leading by example. That's something so good to look forward to. And for me, I will say this is one of the regional 40 competitions that I've seen a lot of positives come out of it. Um, there have been negatives as well, but with the bat, I'm so I'm so happy to see our uh, players being consistent. Mikhail is one of them because he didn't just go a century and then pack up. Yeah. 
you know, he went on to be consistent. Amir Django, yeah. another one that, you know, got a couple half centuries. Yeah, and by the way, remember that Mikhail Lewis. As well. Yeah, remember that Mikhail Lewis started the season with uh, two centuries in his opening match. Then he had a couple of matches where he didn't fire. Then he went three half centuries in four innings, and followed that with the century today. And you know, Lance and Murray, had this been 20 years ago, right, with an ending to the regional four-day season like this, yeah, the venues right across the Caribbean mm -hmm. would be jam-packed for yeah. this final set yeah. of matches yeah. and I think it's still disappointing that we're seeing yeah. um, pretty much empty stadia across the region for these matches. Yeah, but a real interesting end to the tournament because if we have the Leewards Hurricanes in fourth but still just six <laughs> points off the lead, they scored 300 today led by Mikhail Lewis, um, third hundred of the series as you said and he is the tournament's leading scorer and the 17-year-old Joel Andrew he, he got a half century today in support of Mikhail Lewis Knox. So um, good that the Leewards are still fighting, fighting to the end. 300, not an, a, an unassailable total for the Volcanoes to chase. But Volcanoes themselves are, on, are in with a <laughs> shot at the title as well. So yeah. interesting times ahead. And the Volcanoes, six for one. All right. Yeah, so much more to come on the regional four-day tournament. Not today, though. We'll bring you up to date tomorrow. Let's take a break. We'll be back to wrap up today's show. One hundred.